I realize this is a talk I've been giving even every Friday for a few weeks now. <laughs> always change something, but just happening. Okay, so in the graph for path queries, it's based on two papers and further work I've been doing at Sanger for the last year. The first paper I did, based on the work I did when I was a student, my supervisor want, wanted me to develop a browser transform based representation for the brewing graphs. The pro bad, bad thing was I wasn't listening, I, I didn't know the brewing graph at the moment, at the time. So what we ended up was a browser transform based index for directed acyclic graphs. Then a bit later another group developed what I was supposed to do. <laughs> using the same techniques and after I read the paper I realized I actually had solved that problem too, but nobody knew it. <laughs> so, we, so now I'm de developing GCSA2, which is based on the ideas from both of those papers and a lot of new things as well. Okay, the problem basically, we have a graph. I, I don't really care that this, uh, what, what kind of graph we have as long as the paths in the graphs are strings. And then give path queries given other strings, given k-mares, we want to find the paths which are labeled by that string. Now, how, how do we index that? The easiest, <coughs> simplest way is just using a hash table. We, have, we select k, then find all the k-mares in the graph and represent them in a hash table. Then we can query the graph for paths of length exactly k very quickly. If we Make, we can make also make it a bit slower, but a bit more general by creating something similar to the suffix array. Then we can use binary search in the array and f for paths of length k or less. And that's also already a bit more general, a bit more useful. Okay, but the interesting thing about k mer indexes of any kind is that we can use them to simulate the brewing graphs. So if we look at, exp use it, look at the, exp the brewing graph explicitly, we, we find that all the paths in the original graph, no matter how long they are, they can be find, found in the, the brewing graph. So we can use the k mer index also for queries longer than k. Of course, the catch is that there are some paths that don't exist in the original graph. So if we look for paths longer than k, we must verify the results in the original graph afterwards. Yeah. Otherwise, there would be maybe false positives. So this is the, is, the, is the basic idea behind the GCSA2. Instead of indexing the original graph, we in index the brewing graph for the parts in the original graph. Yeah. And then, okay. Oh, the problem is larger the k, the bigger larger the, the brewing graph is and it grows exponentially with k, so that we need some kind of pruning, or actually two kinds of pruning. First, some parts in the original graph are just too, too ugly. We have to prune them somehow, make them simpler. At the moment, VG uses some kind of heuristics based on, let's see, how many non-trivial edges to have 16 mere crosses or something like that. Richard Durbin has been talking about that we should base the indexed graphs would be based on known haplotypes instead. But we don't know well, that's something that probably needs a little more work. Then we can also prune the De Bruyne graph without changing the kind of queries it can resolve. Basically, if we have De Bruyne graph with very large k, very large order, most of the nodes are probably redundant there. If, if a shorter label already uniquely defines a position in the original graph, we can use that shorter label for that, that set of nodes instead. And uh, there are some formal technicalities, Richard, no, noticed last week when I was giving a talk at a group meeting, and which were actually implemented a couple, several months ago in the in GCC2, but I w didn't realize they changed the kind of pruning I was doing, but anyway. So this, ah, up the top graph is the original graph, then we have the brewing graph, then we have pruned it, so which makes it smaller and simpler. Because in many 
most of the places we only need only, only need two bases to uniquely determine the position. And now we're not in so we're actually not indexing the brewing graph, we are indexing the prune de brewing graph. And then the pre rep representation of the graph. We sort the nodes in lexicographic order and then for output three sequences. For the in the first sequence, the Barosle transform, the, we output the labels with the predecessors of each node. For example, for the node TA, we output A and G. Then in degree sequence, which has, it has two incoming edges, we output two, and the out degree sequence, one outgoing edge, we output one. If these sequences are sorted in lexicographic order, we can use them for searching for gamers and for determining the edges in the prune de Bruyne graph. And we also need to store some pointers to the original graph for actually use, to use, actually use this as an index. Basically, if there are unary parts, parts with just one incoming edge and one outgoing edge for each node, then we store the, store the pointer at the beginning of the part. And then there are some special cases which we also need to handle. Then, well, this is similar to the Butterfly Transform FM index. And t typically we are using something like a byte or two bytes per node of this prune de Bruyne graph. Okay. Well, this is what, it, what the index actually looks like. Okay, it, we don't store the node labels explicitly, but we have the three sequences of degrees encoded in, as a binary sequence just with the borrowers that transform and in degrees. I'm not going into the details, but this example shows how we map the range of nodes map matching pattern T in the range of nodes matching pattern AT. There are three kinds of operations. Select, where we find the i one bit in the in degree sequence, then LF, which is the same LF mapping as in borrowers that transform, and then rank, which tells how many one bits there are in this prefix. Using these operations, we can map, map the range for range of nodes matching as a, a pattern into a <coughs> pattern X, for example, into a range of nodes matching pattern CX for an additional character C. Yeah. Okay. Qu quick idea how, to, how we actually build this. We start from parts of 9K as Eric described, then use a prefix doubling algorithm originally, the original construction, suffix array construction algorithm, at the Bruin de, Bruin de Bruin graph. Three kinds of steps there extend. If we have path of length k, we join them into path of length 2k. After every prune extend, we do a prune step. We look, look, if, look at paths sharing a common suffix, common prefix, if they are all start from the same node in the original graph, we can merge them into a single path, or actually in the single node of the prune de Bruyne graph. Repeat, extend and prune a few, few times, and then to merge, if, if so, which makes all paths with the same label into a single, single node of the prune de Bruyne graph. And how it's actually implemented, each chromosome is in a sep separate file, on disk, we load, for each 10 step, we load one chromosome at a time into memory, output the next, the longer parts, and then sort them. And after this is done for all of all chromosomes, we do, pr do the prune step, which is it just streams all the sorted files from disk and merges them and lo looks if, if, if nodes can be, parts can be merged, and then writes them back to the corresponding files. Merge is very similar. And the final construction does something a bit more complicated because we are, this only gives the nodes of the nodes and we already also need the edges of the prune de Bruyne graph. But, well, n not going into details. <laughs> yeah. To oh. clarify, these chromosomes 1, 2, 3 are the same chromosomes of different individuals? Or all, all the chromosomes 1, 2, no, uh, It's just example. It's a single file containing uh, Multiple well, it's well, actually it's it's a self con a single graph that 
each of the files should, should contain a graph which doesn't intersect with the other files except at the start node at the, and the sync node. So, so in this case, all all parts from chromo created from chromosome one are in one file. All parts from chromosome two in another file, and so on. This is a trick basically done to save memory. Yeah, during the construction. Yeah. 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 So this this is just for the construction. Yeah, I mean, you could break it even smaller if you wanted. Yeah. Yeah. But <coughs> the question yeah. is, if these numbers are. If us to human chromosome one, human chromosome yeah. two, or just a num well, I mean, it could be a number. Sequence one, sequence yeah, two. Yeah, maybe, maybe we should yeah. Yeah, could change and just refer to yeah, yeah. sequence one, sequence two. Yeah. Okay. okay, this is what the actual construction requirements are. This is for Charles and general human variation pruned with some VG commands. Yeah. And that means that just to clarify, that means if it crosses four non-trivial edges in 16 bases, then it will stop yeah. having cameras. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so start from path of length 16, only, only index the forward strand, and end up with index for, or for game for 32, 64, 128. It's, well, time, it takes about, well, around 10 hours, depending on the actual system and which, how many, how long paths we want to index. Uses a reasonable amount of memory compared to the old implementations, and a few hundred gigabytes of disk space, temporary disk space. The fi final index is a bit less than 10 gigabytes. Uh, it doesn't really depend on the length of the paths because, uh, well. You see, in the pruning of the debruing graph creates <coughs> pretty much the same size of the the final size of the pruned debruing graph is pretty much the same, all depend regardless of the number of the length of the parts. So we are something we have something like five to six billion nodes, while while the actual debruing graph keeps growing exponentially. And then, well. So this is, the, this is the basic idea. We can use prune the brewing graphs and encode them with the BWT to index variation graphs. We have, a, we have a practical implementation which supports queries of length up to 128 eight without false positives. And it's an FM index, so there are ma many things in text indexing literature we can use with this. We'll have to, at least after generalizing it a bit. Well, I have time. Maybe I'll show one more slide here. This. So, actually, what I've been thinking recently is that graphs are maybe not their correct rep representation anyway. <laughs> if I've observed this example, we have blue, orange, red, purple, and blue, red, orange, purple. How do we represent this as a graph? We could do this, this way. So, where which duplicates ident identical and probable subgraphs which are probably this should be the same, and not a good idea in the reference. Yeah, it will duplicate all the annotations. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Or we can just merge them, but what then we have cycles that prob probably don't make sense. For example, red, orange, red, orange, red, orange. <laughs> yeah, and this is something. Well, ultimately, because this, this is caused. Well, because that the reason for this is that graphs correspond to regular languages, regular expressions, and they can't express all the interest, all the st structures we would like to, them to express. So, if we want, we would need to in use some kind, some kind of grammars for representing these kind of structures. But then, well, nobody knows how to index them. But this is something maybe some <coughs> someone has to think about at some point. Yeah. So anyway, we have a practical index for graphs, and we c there are many things that c could be done with it, but nobody has investigated it yet. It's well, it's a text index, and well, anyway, questions. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much.